Wally Bra and well this is part two of my gargoyle letterbox and if you haven't been watched or if you haven't watched the first part you can either go and do that or carry on watching this part but basically what we've done is well what we're doing is I want to make this letterbox look like a gargoyle yeah that sort of thing a gargoyle <laughs> so, um, in part one, which we did the, uh, earlier today, this Saturday, which is pouring down the rain outside, we've created, well, the shoulder part and the leg part for the front section. There you go. Looks a bit odd, doesn't it, like that? Looks like some weird hair day. Yeah. But if you visualise it like this and put the gargoyle's head on it, like so... Oh, you can see. And it is this weird square shape because it's got to go round something that's square, such as the letterbox. Yeah. So this is a French style letterbox, sort of typical sort of thing. You put parcels in it or, you know, letters and bills. And the whole point is I want to fend off the bills, yeah. Because gargoyles, they're, they're there, aren't they, to uh, scare away the evil spirits. Bills are pretty evil, aren't they? Yes. Huh. Ah, uh, part two, hello, Mad Monk, how you doing, buddy? Okay, come on, hey, I got back again. <laughs> anyway, we're going to make this bit, the head. Make it, make it, make it, get it ahead. Sound check, good? That's what I like to hear. So, um, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> oh, so somehow I've got to make that. Yeah. I have actually glued up the wood already for this, because it's going to be made out of pine again, just like these parts are. Yep, that's the shoulder bit, shoulder blades. And uh, we're going to do intarsia yet again. So it's not going to be like one piece of wood. It'll be lots of different pieces of wood. That's kind of what intarsia is. If you look at this here, to give you an indication, if you weren't watching earlier, that's what you get. Where you got, these are all separate pieces. That's a separate piece, that's a separate piece. So I cut it out as one piece, and then I cut it again. I glued it back on again. But before I did that, I created like shapes. See? To create that kind of, that weird look. Uh, and I'll get one there, yeah? So that's basically what we're doing. Um, and there's going to be more detail in the head. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So I'm going to go a bit with the flow and see what we get. And how we can make this work. But things like, like brow lines and stuff like that, they're all like uh, the ideal places to do it. You know what I mean? So you just create all this. And obviously the horns and the ears and inserts for the ears. Tongue. Got, got to have a tongue. And the eyes, the eyes, are, I'm, I'm wondering whether I can get hold of some like, red LEDs for that. I think that'd be quite cool. But that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> hey, ginger giraffes, I heard you might have been in bed. Oh, yes, you were, you were sleeping. Oh, well, I, I, I imagine in the United States, it was very, very late and dark when I was doing this earlier. So anyway, we're back again. This is part two. So I'm going to grab my bit of wood. I have to move this because I can't get past it. <laughs> the tripod's in the way. So you can see what we've been doing. So I'll quickly explain to you again what we're actually making, Gingers. And whoever else has just turned up. We are trying to make this letterbox look like a gargoyle. A bit like me. Or pretty Patel. Ugh, scary thought. So here's a bit of wood I glued up earlier. This is going to be for the head portion. So that is going to be on there sort of thing. Yeah? Or well, not on there. I'm going to cut that bit of wood in that kind of pattern. Sort of scary-ish. I want to make the horns a bit bigger though. I think they're a little bit stumpy. A bit too much like me. So I'm going to go on there like that. And these portions here, <laughs> I don't know how to hold it on, but that will go on there like so. That's like that. And then that leg will be down there. I wonder if we can do... Well, can I hold it on or not? Probably not. Anyway, that's going to go on there like that, so, so to speak. And that's going to be on there, sort of like that. And that'll be on there like that, making sure that we can still open the letterbox. Because it'll be a bit stooped if we can't. So, that is the plan. And hopefully, we can get this head part done in the second part. Yes, we've got to make his nut in part two, which is this. That's what we're doing, isn't it? It's part two. Oh, dear. Okay, so... I have my piece of wood all glued up, ready to go. 
And before I even start, I've got to make it a little bit smoother than what it is. Because if I use it like that, it's all lumpy and bumpy. And I'll be drawing over and going all over the lumps. And I don't want lumps. No, I'm lumpy enough for the two of us. Right, where are we? Oh, where's the tool's gone? Oh, it's over there. <coughs> so, I need to just sand that and get rid of all the lumps and bumps. Bring it up a bit higher. And to do that, I'm going to put a mask on because I don't want to be breathing that glue in. Because the glue that I'm using is cascamite and it is powderous wood glue, which is urea formaldehyde. Anyone knows what that stuff is? It's not good for you. It can give you cancer. I don't want cancer. No. Not great. So I'll have to put this mask on. I've got a bigger mask down there as I can put on, but you wouldn't hear a word I say if I put that on. This one's bad enough. Luckily, the microphone is already close. But I better sand muffled. Right. So I'm using the angle grinder as a sander. I was going to clear up in here, but I just didn't get time. I had to walk the dogs, you know, in the rain. They weren't that keen. <laughs> right, so far so good. Oh, I'll put down there for a minute. That's the back, that's the front. Ugh. Air filter on. Suck some of this dust up that's flying about now. That's my favourite woodworking, it's quite a dusty job. You can have all your dust extraction and everything piped up, but it always gets in the flipping way. And lots of machines don't have provisions for dust extraction at all. Especially the old stuff that I tend to have. <coughs> so, that one's that leg there. So the finish we've done on here is actually literally using a blowtorch. For those of you who have not seen it already, seen, well, part one. So that's going to go on there like that, and that'll be up there like that, sort of thing. You get the gist? And I'll be thinking about what I'm going to do. That's done that, let's get that off there. I'll be thinking what I'm going to do with the other portions of, you know, at the moment we're, we're, we're focusing on the front. But really what's something on the back, which is definitely going to be a tail, yeah. And I might put some legs on the side, sort of, they'll be kind of more of a token effort, really. But I would like to put something on the back. I don't know whether I'm going to do, like, dinosaur spikes or something stupid. Or whether or not I'm going to put a, make a, like a bit of a spine. So lots of separate bits of wood glued together with some ribs coming off or something like that. Whatever looks grotesque. That'll do the job. You, you can imagine the sizes. So it's going to have to be all the way up here. It's kind of make the letterbox look ridiculously big, though. <laughs> I don't know what our post lady's going to think. Oh, dear. <laughs> good. So not for that. That's good. Just managed to blow everything on the floor. With the, with the sand. Let's pick that up. I tell you what, though. My voice has changed. She's been doing all these videos. My voice is getting horsier and horsier. I used to be really squeaky at one point. Still a little bit squeaky. But I feel like I'm sort of squeaky horse now. <clears throat> right, now, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking that his head's a little bit low. I think he needs more height in it. That's why I've given that a bit more height. And also, I want the horns to be a bit bigger. So I think the horns are a little bit sort of token effort, really. That's my opinion, anyway. I might be talking rubbish. Anyway, let's see who's here. La 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 la. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, Jasper. Doorbell time, Baphomet. By Gravedigger. The boys with big red LEDs. That's what we're going to do. That's what I'd like to do. I'll have a look um, in our local action. I'm sure they've got LEDs in there. Or some, or some way I could do it. And you've got a light inside. What about um, like using garden lights? You know, the little um, sticking lights, pull them apart, get the LED, so, they're so then they're powered by um, solar then. Little solar lights, you know. But that'd work. Yeah, that'll work. 
they always glow in bright red. At night, I just put a bit of like, I don't know, some sort of like red lens over them. Oh, don't... oh look, I've got a bot comment. <laughs> oh dear. I hope you have a nice sleep, Gingers. Ah, oh, cheers for that. Yeah, that's quite cool. It sort of gives you an overview of what we've been doing. But we're going to continue. And we're going, to, we're going to do the head. What am I using the dumbbell for? Well, at the back, I'll use it to prop things down. And sometimes I'll get a little silly. And then other times I'll just use it to hold things down. If you talk about the dumbbell over there. Quite handy having a weight to hold things down. D or Elsa. La 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 la. Why do I keep getting these bot comments? They're quite annoying, you know. And out of it. Looking good. Part two. Sound check. Okay. Sounds good to me. So let's get to it. All right. So I'm going to have to transfer. Now I've cleaned a bit of wood up. We're going to have to transfer. Tell you what, I'll move you a bit closer so you can see. Ah. This is why I need multiple cameras. I want a camera over there and a camera over there and a camera over here. Camera looking down. It's quite cool, can not it? And I just press the button and it'll swap from one camera to another. That's my plan. But I need to build a channel up with it first. That was a bit pointless. Because it cost too much money. There we go. All right, so you can see here what I'm doing now, can't you? All right, so that is the head. And I'm going to make that a little bit more... Um, how to put it? A bit different. So I'll bring this down as low... I don't get any wider, so I'll bring it down as low as I can. I've got to make sure I capture the ears in those bits. So I'll draw around it first, and then I'll decide, hmm, I want that to be a bit, well, a bit bigger or a bit smaller or a bit taller or a bit wider, a bit lumpier, a bit more gargoyleish. Gargoyleish? Is that actually a word? Gargoyleish? No, probably not. So I'm going to accentuate some of these features. There's artistic license. I do like a bit of artistic license. Have I got the paper the right way around this time? That'd be good. Yes, I have. Good. Because at one point of the stream today, somehow I managed to have it the wrong way round. Which was very silly of me. I felt very silly. That I can be sure. Right. Looking good. I'm going to put my bum down here. My dear wife pulled me a little beer out somewhere. What have I done with that? It was over there. I'll just bring it over here so I don't want it knocking it over. Cheers. 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 <laughs> right. Okie dokie. So we're going to draw around this first. So literally just going to follow the lines the best that I can. Remembering that we are actually on wood. So wood does try and make you follow the grain, which is not very helpful. It doesn't matter because it is kind of artistic license anyway, so when it comes to cutting on the saw, you might have noticed in the previous stream I wasn't really following the lines exactly. I was just sort of somewhere near. So it doesn't matter. Because we're not patterning this in the sense that we're not making one you know two of them exactly the same. This is a one off. I can't imagine anyone want to buy one. <laughs> Costs too much money anyway, the time it take you to to do a proper professional job of it, you know what I mean? Because I'm kind of like doing it for me, so I'm not too worried. Gotta make sure I get all these little details. That's the tongue. Like so. So all I'm doing is with the sheet. If you, if you don't know carbon paper, basically it's carbonised paper and it transfers any indentation or pressure that I apply on the top here will get transferred onto the wood behind. I'll show you in a minute. There you go. Like so, 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 so. Like that. Oh, it's like magic. So it's very useful stuff. What you don't want is a pencil that is sharp. You want one that's been worn on sort of a rounded point. Otherwise, I just put holes in everything. So at the moment, I'm just putting these lines in like so. And once I remove it, I'm going to have to add some more lines because we're doing intarsia, which involves extra cutting 
of all these pieces into separate components. And at the moment, it's not designed as such. I could say, hmm, how are we doing there? La 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 la. Okay, like so. Like that one there. Ah, it's working. Got the eyes to do. Now these ears are going to be bigger. So they're not that critical at this stage. It just gives me an idea whereabouts they've got to go. The horns are going to be bigger as well. They're too babyish. They're like uh, little Nicky horns. Mm -hmm. Let's put that, make sure got get in there. I think it's many of the eyes now. And the brow line. He's got a unibrow. I think he needs a unibrow. I might make the eyes a little bit fat, he looks very sinister at the moment. I was originally planning to do it more um, goofy, sort of a goofy look. But he's, um, he's turned out a little bit sinister. He's sort of kind of relying on what you can find online regarding designs and ideas. Unless you drew the whole thing from scratch. You need something to base it on, I suppose. I think it's all there. So now I'll move this over half. A bit of guidance, and then we're gonna highlight it a little bit with a mark pen. Make it easier to follow the lines. And then I've got to decide on how I'm gonna do the intarsia portions. The ears, for instance, I want to be bigger. I think they could be a bit bigger. So we're gonna bring them out anyway. I always sand off the bits that I don't want. I'm going to bring them up more up here, I think. And then all of that. So we'll remove that section here and bring it one up higher. The grain don't help in the wood. Look at that. I just want the ears to be bigger than what they were, maybe more pointy than what I've done there. That needs to start further up, I think. So more like More pointy. Like so. Like so. Just mean, that's, they're probably bigger than them. So I'll try and mimic that on this side now. Side, who to say how big the ears are on the gargoyle? Has anyone seen one? So, I'm going to probably bring that top of his head up a bit higher as well. So, I'm going to increase the height of these horns because they're too small. They will like a bolt of lightning between them or something. <laughs> More like that, I think. That's better. Around. And then we've got this section here which creates a bit of detail, um, like the like where it's bulging out of the flesh. This bit. Obviously, some of these details will be done with the pyrography. No, one short one, one tall one would be silly, wouldn't it? So we need to bring that one round up to a similar sort of height up here somewhere. Yeah. 
Who's seen my video that I made about how to cut a 45 degree um, angle just using a handsaw? No gauges, no pencil, no measures, no nothing. Just the handsaw, because it's a technique. I can cut a 45 degree, almost perfect, without any gauges. Not just by eye, it is by eye, but there's a technique. A friend of mine, used to be my father's friend actually, years ago, they used to work together. And he started work, then, he, then he, he came to work for me, uh, David Chapman, and he died. He keeled over off in a um, oh, uh, conservatory down south. Okay, so that's that here. You just need it. Ah, I look better. That's looking better. Yeah, he's a lovely, lovely, lovely guy, David Chapman. He's such a little comedian he was. Well, I said little, he was quite a big guy. Chunky guy like me. Quite tall. Not like me. <laughs> right, so we're getting there. We're getting our shape together, you say. That's, I've accentuated the horns a bit and accentuated the ears. There's two key features, aren't they? You don't want wimpish ears and kind of, I don't know, pathetic horns. Maybe like a, like a, like they're all seeing eyes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's really relevant. So now I'm going to do the eyes. I think the eyes need to be a little bit taller as well. It's almost like this one here. It's like his head's been squished a bit. I might be wrong. But I think I'm going to bring it in and bring it a bit higher. So we're going to have this portion here. These are all bits that are likely to be cut again. So I'm going to bring it a bit higher. For the eyes. That's it. And then I'm quite possibly going to cut all of that. On that side, so that becomes a whole separate piece, and then this side might not be. I don't know yet. I'll see how it goes. It might because that then becomes part of the nose, so that too will end up might end up being a separate piece. I don't know yet. Oh god, this is difficult. <laughs> or do I just bring it in like that and around in like that, and then that piece becomes separated? Quite possibly. You've got to do it obviously for the best effect, haven't you? So it's a bit hard to know what's for the best until. Uh, because yeah, you could do all this, couldn't you? Then when it comes down to actually creating it, it could look absolutely terrible. Like that does. <laughs> Doesn't look sinister enough now. Why well, doesn't it look sinister enough? Because his eyes aren't slanting enough. I think it needs to be more tilted. No, I think I should have left the eyes alone. Look at that. There you go. Just move that one up. They need to be quite slitty. That one I might sand off again. I'm not happy with it. Let's fill my beer up with dust. Ugh, it's a wire. <laughs> Do you like my rubber? <laughs> I think what the problem was, is I made the top and the bottom too similar. The top should be more shallow and more of a gradual sweep. Let's put on pencil first. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, that's more like, definitely more like it. Yeah, that's better. Maybe not quite so long. That's part of the problem there. I can see a bit of problem there as well. And that 
come down here like so, like the brow line. Oh, going that far there. Anyway, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Maybe I'll carry on this bit here. Let's do the outside first. It was pouring down outside. We walked dogs out in the, in the gap in the rain in between these streams. Just do it around like so. Bit of a scribble. And now we've got to think about his jawline now and the tongue. Uh, I might just do ooh, the jawline and tongue. Because I might need to show a bit more of that. I've got to be careful because I've, I've got to be able to open the door, the box door. I was planning to make this, the t I might actually make the tongue actually st sticking out. At the moment it's just showing it like, like that, so to speak, something like that. That is literally the tongue and it's sort of coming down here. Like Which could also be here as well, couldn't it? Should work. That'd work. But I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have it so the tongue itself is is more perpendicular with the base. It looks a bit weird, right? No, no. You're almost an amphibian. <laughs> so, so that's the br the br the how the board comes. It needs to sweep round to there. Not necessarily join that, but it needs to be sort of out there. And then scoop, then around, and scoop. So those bits you think about shadows, where your nostrils are. It's bizarre with a with a heavy pen. So all that. So these are like his cheeks, tops of his cheeks. So I well, the tops or bottoms of cheeks. I'm quite certain though. Mm, it's there, isn't it? Top of the nose to here, yeah, bottoms of cheeks. So we've got to, um, yeah, it's right in my head now. That wasn't looking that one. So at the moment, that's there, so I think a little bit. Because I've got to think about how I can make these into all separate pieces as well and sections. So once we actually cut the back bit basically out, we've then got lots of extra pieces to cut. So this bit's a lot more detailed. It needs to be made, don't it? I feel like almost that'll be there. So it's down and up. Yeah, that's it. Sort of like that. Right, so that's basically, the sh that's kind of it. With a marker pen, obviously, it's not going to look like, quite like that. We have to think about what bits we're going to remove. Right, when we, once we cut around the outside edge like so, once we cut around the outside edge, Right, I didn't think, well, the tongue's obviously going to be separate, the eyes are going to be separate, the horns are going to be separate, the ears, these portions of the ears will be separate. So, like, for instance, if we look at this section here, I'd then cut all the way around there, that piece there, all the way around here, like so. And then I decide myself, what am I going to do with this piece? Am I, this line here, this kind of where it bulges out, do I bring that around all the way around and have that as a separate piece, which you could do? The only problem with that idea it's going to be such a thin piece, and how you won't be able to round, put the round on very easy. And I suppose you could do it by hand. So you could take that right round like so, and then do the same with that one, and do them as, as that could be a separate piece to the horn, into that. So you got one, two, but you'd have to hand sand that into shape. Well, that's, that's not a problem, is it really? So you got all that bit there, that could be peak, that could be one. Then how do we do this section? Do we keep all this section here as one? And then maybe bring could bring the note. So do I join that to that so I can keep that as a separate piece? But then that'll take away from the feature. Do I? Oh, it's difficult. Uh, so you could do. You could bring this up to the bottom of the eye because that's where it kind of, that's where the line goes, isn't it, normally on your nose to the bottom of the eye. So then all this. What about like that? And that as well. Do you bring that to the bottom of that eye as well? Like so. You can overdo it, that's the problem. You can overdo it. Because um, you remember, these are all going to be separate pieces of wood like that. Yeah? There's three pieces here. 
there's only several pieces. But how do we do it so it works and doesn't look ridiculous? Because we've got the eyes as well, they're obviously another separate piece. We'll cut that bit out there. So it's quite a lot going on with this. So ideally that really ought to come in there because I need to, be able to cut the eye out and it's easier if I come in from the outside edge. So we can continue that to there, that's not a problem. So that means that could all be separate. So that's a cheek, that's a cheek, that's a cheek. That's what I'm going to do, I think. I'm hoping it's not going to overdo it. It might look strange now, I don't know if I'll join it all up. It's, it's more than a feature, isn't it? It becomes, it becomes just um, more about inf for my information, really. So at this stage, it's a good idea. I can mark each, each of these pieces, number them, and then number them on the pattern as well. Some bits will be, be obvious where they go, but I might as well make it easy for myself. It's a bit like painting by numbers. So, for instance, if that was going to be one, I'd make that one over here as well. So it gives me some sort of idea where all the bits go. Most of it, it should be fairly obvious, to be honest, anyway. Um, so how are we doing at the moment? We've got, that would be a section, that would be a section. Do I worry about this piece? I'm beginning to think, no. Maybe I'll do away with that altogether. It's just the horn coming out. Because you can overdo it. Because Tommy routed it all out, man. You can, you know, you'll be adding too many details. It might not work. On the other hand, it might be absolutely fine. Uh, so we've got that be a whole piece. That's a piece. That's a piece. There's no section that will be all one piece. That's one piece, 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 piece. So there's several bits going on in there. And the tongue at the moment is to stick that at the bottom effectively. I would like the tongue to be carved and coming out of the mouth. Just so that much, yeah, and we can maybe do that, do that red. Instead of the, tor the torch look, do that red. Um, you know, the brulee, and this, uh, and the eyes are what are really what I put LEDs in them. <laughs> so, at this stage, I think we're going to do. We're going to go to the bandsaw and take off as much as we can with the bandsaw around the basically around, around the outside edge, so we let in up the outside, and then some of it can be done with the bandsaw. But I'm looking at. It, I think most of it, I might as well just tr do my best and do it with the. Um, See, that could be done all the way through here, could be done with a bandsaw as well. So I'll do that first. So that can come off, that section can come off. That's too sharp. Yeah, I think the rest of it I'll do with the scroll saw. Anyway, let's set this up near the bandsaw so we can carry on cutting him out. Oh, God, what's his name now? On the, that reminds me of um, <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> It's uh, oh, Rick Moranis. You know, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, that geezer. Oh, Spaceballs. Dark, helm dark Helmet. <laughs> oh, dear. That's a funny film. Had John Candy in it as well, didn't I? Before he died. He was the cat. Oh, dear. That was a bizarre, bizarre, very bizarre film. Spaceballs. Funny as hell, though. I did like that. Anyway, see what you're saying before I make some noise. 3D look, yeah. He needs a forked tongue. It's not, it's not, yes, we could have a forked tongue. Do gargoyles have forked tongues? If they do, we can do that. That'd be quite cool. <laughs> you could, couldn't you, Kit Kat? Yeah. More friendly, more goofy. But we, oh, I need to fend away the post lady so she doesn't bring the bills. Yeah, it does look a bit like a dragon at the moment, doesn't it? That's what I was thinking. So if I end up putting like uh, spikes on the back like, uh, like a dragon, that would actually look more like a dragon. Weeping angels. Woo! Yes, see, the screen's still for the upcoming live stream. Kept switching between slightly different images, really. Ah, <laughs> really? Oh, God, that's ooh, spooky. Oh, it's like a weeping angel. Oh, I see. I get you now. If only he added an autom an automated recording. Dare you bring bills and bad news? <gasps> oh, yes. Or junk mail. <laughs> My poor pose will get a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do some pyography as well, Jasper. I've been, I've been a bit of wood burning as well, on just to, you know, to get that kind of 
scorched earth look. It's a bit of fun, a bit of fun. Anyway, let's get this chopped into, you know, smaller bits. Start with the outside as well. A bit of wax. Need a new insert in there, it's got a bit big. Need to make a new insert. But we'll do that another time. Just grabbing my gargoyleish. Very gargoyleish. I suppose a gargoyle, though, is, is flatter in the face than a dragon. I'm just going to double check my wood burner. Because then he went out when I went um, for a walk and stuff. And I come back. Oh my god, what have I done? I forgot about my wood burner. Oh, it feels warm. I'm going to put some sawdust in it. That smolder. It's quite good that I've got a wood burner that can actually burn sawdust. That's actually really very helpful. Add some light. Let's wax the lines. Don't cross the lines or the streams. It's a bit dirty. It's a dirty candle. It's good to have a bit of wax on it because, like I mentioned earlier, it, the blade will grab the wax and help lubricate the blade as it cuts. As it goes through, it does make a difference. You can tell when you, do, when you do it this way. So first of all, I'm going to cut the outside. Oh, down a bit. There you go. That's better, isn't it?
That's a bit of a sharp corner for that, uh, too wide for that really. End up breaking the band. Not the rubber band, no. The band sort of laid band. Nearly there. One there though was we cut and can be removed using this saw. Saw. I thought we're, I think we're getting there, and now we need obviously that bit. <laughs> Don't forget this time, <laughs> it's going to be on there. So now we do the rest of that with the scroll saw. I might change the blade in that scroll saw, it's a bit fine for what I'm, what I'm actually cutting. So let's um, see what I've got. I might have a coarser blade, I might not have one, so then I can't. But I might do, then I can. Well, I make decisions. How about being indecisive? Oh, don't let that go in there. Right, so where are we going to put I want a chair? The spike sticking out. Oh, sorry about that. Spike sticking out so I can spike myself. Right. La 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 la. Did he do? Oh, got nine people there. Hello there, nine people. My youngest wish I had this equipment instead of having to do this all with a handsaw. I think she understands why I call. The hardware shops, Mummy's Toy Store. <laughs> yeah. It's handy having the gear, obviously. I'm quite fortunate, really. But then again, um, I've always had a reason to have it in the sense, it, yeah, that's how I made my money. Well, I say made my money. But I make a little bit of money. I made my money. It makes me sound like I'm a rich person. Far from that, for Christ's sake. <laughs> what am I thinking? Right, um, so I'll take, remove the rest of that. So no, I have to admit, I'm quite fortunate living here. And our cost of living is very, very low. because we grow lots and lots of food and we do a lot of um, conserves so um, I make a lot of ratatouille sauces and stuff like that so if we have food shortages for whatever reason and yes it's just been announced actually or well, Macron has 
has been warning that we're likely to have food shortages here in France. And yes, we don't have Brexit, so we've got that worry to worry about. But, um, yeah, that's because of Covid. Right, so I'm getting that one. So that one's going to have some more cuts done that. I'm not sure about this one yet, but if I'm going to do this one yet, the reason why, because I want the, the tongue to stick out. And if that's the case, I'll leave that one and actually add another piece to it. You know, so that if the tongue was coming out like that sort of thing. Argument's sake, but not that big, because that would be silly. But I'd have to carve it to get the shape. <laughs> right, OK, let's get to this. Now, um... We know the ears, the ears, the, um, these, two, these two horns, because they, they knock my finger. Um, these two horns have got to be removed. So we'll do that next. I was going to see whether I've got a coarser blade in there, because there's quite a bit of cutting, and it's going to be slow with that. Let's just see what we've got. I've got quite a few blades. But whether or not I've got anything, yeah, don't, you see all those blades there, it's my little pot. It's basically what, that, there's little bits of um, plumbing pipe. That I've put into some sort of arrangement to hold stuff in. I'll get my blades organised. So I've got these ones. I don't know if these are any coarser. Is that coarser or is that the same? Sharper probably because it's new. It's hard to tell. I can't remember what this one is. Is that one number six? Nope, that is just the same blade. I don't know if I've got anything coarser. It's quite interesting. This, these blades, these are Nicaragua blades. This um, they were supplied by Hobbies of Durham in the, the UK. I don't know if they're even there now. I've had these a long, long time ago. I bought a whole load of them. Um, but other blades you can get are called spiral blades, like so these ones. And the difference between these blades, I don't even see it on there. They actually got a little twist. They're, they're twisted. So they're cut, you know, almost like a twist bit of metal all the way from one end to the other. And the boot about these things, they're good for some jobs, they're not for this job, that'll be terrible for this job, um, is they're cutting on all sides. So effectively, think of like a file almost going up and down. So you, you don't actually have, where you've probably seen me having to move the bit of wood around, with these blades, you literally just push that side, that side, that side, that side. So you're like, you, you can keep the wood in the same direction that you're working as you're looking at it. But with, it, but with an ordinary blade such as this one, you have to follow the cut. So they're good for that, and, but they're only good for certain materials. Um, they're quite good for like, thin plies and stuff like that. They work quite well. But the cut is quite thick. But I, I don't tend to use them. I don't really like them, to be honest. If I'm absolutely honest about it. Like this one here. This looks coarse. I think that coarse was it the same. I don't know. I think I've probably got... The only difference is it's probably sharper. Nah, that's fine. I'll stick with what I've got, because I think they look like the same. I ain't got my powerful glasses on. That's one horn. It's like it's lost a tooth, but a horn. It's hornless. It is not armless. Right, um, so that's basically that one. I'll put that over there. Oh, just really want to change that blade a bit thicker blade. Um, coarser cut. I don't think I've got anything coarser. Is that one like? Well, that might be. Or is that? No, that isn't. That isn't. It's hard to tell. No, definitely not. Well, I did have some really coarse ones, you see. So I've got all these blades here. And they all look identical. 
because they should be because they're in the same pot. But I think that's the same as that blade I got in there actually. Which is cool. The wind's getting outside now. So what I do have in there, I do have like an actual coping saw blade. So this one's coarse, but then you have things. If you get too coarse, with that, you can't. The blade, this blade, if you see it, it's a lot wider. So you want to do very sharp turns with it. This blade, oh, I just threw it on the floor. Uh, and that one, no. So I won't be using that blade. It's too wide. I suppose I'll change one over. Oh, hang on, that one looks a bit coarser. I think it is. I think it's coarser. It might be worthwhile changing it over. If it isn't. Right. It's not an old one, is it? No. Actually, that might be. That's a used blade. No, that's a used blade. I don't know why I keep the used blade for. <laughs> I just want a slightly coarser cut. That's that one. Oh. You can, so you can usually tell what you do is you run things in size. If they're not very grabby, if they're not grabbing your skin, basically the set has gone on, so it's polished off on the sides of the blade the set has. So that's a used blade. No. Oh, God. Why am I keeping these blades for? I should really just chuck them really, shouldn't I? Oh, hang on, what's that one? Just saw a big one. Why are they in the same pot? Because you get all sorts of blades, skip tooth, and that's a new blade, you can tell. Yeah. Because when you run your fingers across it, it grabs your skin. If it doesn't, you run across really smooth and it, it feels soft. That means the corners have been polished off. So let's remove that blade, put this new one in. So first we've got to remove the tension. So now it's gone slack. Ah, of course it's tight. Oh, did it just? So what, I'm doing it off the bottom first. Let's loose it on the bottom. Now I can grab that with a bit more oomph. Crikey, why is that so tight? Blimey. There you go. What I might make, I might have a little, little tool that sits over the top of that, so I don't, um, so it don't slip. Yeah, your things are only so strong, aren't they, after all? Oh, is that what? Yeah. Look at, actually, no, look at that. No, it looks like the same size blade, apart from it's not short. That would be a bonus. If it's not short, I could get a longer, more stroke. Or more clearance, anyway. It's a sharp, anyway. That would make a huge difference. The other one's a bit dull. So what I do first, I'm going to remove, because they just clip one at the bottom here, they just literally slide onto a bit like that. So I know it goes that way around. You, when you're putting your blade, the fret saw blade, into its holder, I know it goes that way, and I know the teeth have to point down. In this case, you just use an Allen key, such as that one. Yeah, modern systems on, the, on new saws, like a, you know, like a Serco or uh, an Axminster, or even better, like a, what's it called now? They have like a quick release system on far, far better. Much better, much better, much better. The Serco machines are good. They're really robust. Got to find me a hole now. I, could, I, put, I made that insert, folks. The original insert was uh, metal, which seems absolutely stupid to me, but... Why can't I find my hole? <laughs> Didn't lose your problem. That's because I've got a camera looking at me, isn't it? That's what it is, isn't it? Oh, that's annoying. So you go, easy to do, get an old blade and put it in the hole. I've got one then. 
on your hold. Like so. There you go. I'll go from the bottom, you could go from the top, but the thing is, it's a lot harder to tighten all the clamp up on, underneath the table. Put the edge into there, which is in. That one's ready. And then we slide this one that goes that way around. And I could really do with a different screw on there, something more, you know, to grip hold of, or a tool that slides over the top so it gives you a little bit more leverage. And now we place that to there. It needs to be sort of in the middle of where the screw portion is of the actual, so the pressure's even on the blade. All right, so we tighten it. There's a tension at the back here, let me see it. At the back of the saw, there's a tension. As you tighten that up until the, you get a bit of a, a tune. That should make quite a difference. Well, the wind's getting up. It's windy out there. Definitely sharper. And you can see the actual blade, the old blade in that is it's broken a few times. Well, sometimes if I get, I don't want to throw a blade away because it's still got lots of life in it, but it's a blunt in one area because you're always using the saw in one bit. What you can do is if you, if you cut it da um, down one way, cut the blade down, nip a bit off with of pliers, you can actually get more life at the blade. So you start using a different part of the actual blade instead of constantly. If you cut plywood all the while, all you'll be doing is using that little bit of the blade there. You won't be using any of this. Oh, God, better. <laughs> That blade was just dull. It needed to be changed. I was checking my analytics on this channel earlier. I thought I was really surprised because um, although my views are really low on this channel, expected to be because uh, I hadn't done anything with this for ages. So you know, YouTube tends to think this, the channel is dormant, so you've got to try and build it up again. But I put that video on the one uh, which one was it there? Uh, the wood turning, the tea light wood turning the tea light one, like a round ball <laughs> in walnut. And although the views are quite low, about 112 views, I think it was, or 120 views, anyway, quite low views, it's actually got me 12 subscribers on that many views. I couldn't believe it. I thought that was amazing. And the one, the other recent video, the one with the thermometer, um, that's actually got me 19 subscribers, but it has got over 300 views on it. But even that, as far as getting subscribers, I thought, crikey, that's pretty darn amazing. <laughs> Way. No? Something about noise. Now this thing here, it literally blows a little bit of air out, keeps the line clear. And that is actually powered by a fish tank air pump. You know, the one that puts little bubbles in your fish tank. Now the, the point is, the thing that originally was this was mounted underneath here somewhere. No, at the back, sorry. And it's like a little plunger thing. But that puts pressure on the arm. So they're never a good idea. So, um, I'll just fit the air pump instead. It's so cheap, so I thought I might as well. It works. It only, only runs like the light comes on whenever I apply the pedal. Oh no, look at the shape of his ear now. Oh dear. <laughs> right, that's an ear. Let's do the other ear. So there's going to be a lot of components on this bit, so it's a, it's a bit more involved. Having a new blade has made a huge difference. I suppose it's not surprising. And also, remember, that is now not hitting my finger. You know, the, knot, the little knurled nut.
the nice thing about scroll saws, they're an actually an incredibly safe machine. You might nick yourself with a blade or something like that, but nothing, you're not going to do any serious damage. And one of the dangerous machines was actually that um, bandsaw, really. Um, not in this workshop because I've got LED lights. But if you've got fluorescent lights, the fluorescent lights can actually freeze the motion because the frequency of the light and the, um, the travel of the blade. You can actually, and also on your circular saw, it can make the blade look like it's not moving. So it's um, considering that the band saws are not that, well, they are fairly noisy, but aren't too bad. Not like, not like the table saw, anyway. You could quite easily cut yourself if you're not careful. So, you know, it's best to have LEDs or incandescent lights or something like, like that. Just these days, LEDs, obviously. Well, which cut shall I do next? Eedy, beedy, miny, I'm going to do this one, which comes over here. Oh, light, a seam, light, a seam. That was a uh, fifth element uh, reference. <laughs> anyway, what are you saying over here? Live chat. Oh, look, I've got another bot comment. I've been getting a lot of bot comments. Hello, Peter, buddy, how you doing? Just, just back from Dublin, visiting my youngest daughter. I hope she's okay. How old is your youngest daughter? Is she still at school or is she college or is she married with hundreds of kids? Cool. Yes, it will be a sort of a 3D look. And hopefully the weather doesn't destroy it. Good afternoon, Peter Dallas. I hope you're well. Hey, <laughs> nice one. Well, we're doing his head now. The gargoyle's head. So I've cut his horns out. I've cut his mouth off. So I've, de sort of de I've decapitated it. And now I'm chopping it up into bits, ready for the intarsia. You know, with all the funny shaped bits we do. So, yeah, there's a bit more detail in this bit. But it's, it's kind of the focal point, isn't it? It's the thing that we want people to look at and say, staring at me. Could cause car accidents, as it is. Or hope not. I just thought of something. Now, if you know my dogs, which some of you do, my, my white one, Sebastian, oh, get down there. He's a, he, yeah, if he sees anything that seems to be out of place, he'll just stand and bark at it for ages. There was a, a digger there once outside our house, and he stood and barked at that. There was a road sign, he stood and barked at that. So I wonder what he's going to do when there's a cargo on top of the letterbox. <laughs> he's going to stand and bark at that, I reckon. <laughs> Stop there. I'm coming into it, which is what I want. I'll come back a bit. Uh, and then it's the nose. As you can see there, you can, you can just spin it around with, with a scroll saw. You can do virtually any shape you like. And that's quite a coarse blade in there. Um, you can get coarser, obviously. But that's the nice thing about the scroll saw. You can do all sorts of shapes. And you've probably seen a lot of the scroll or fret saw type work. It's a bit really intricate stuff. I'm not really into that old-fashioned type of stuff at all. It's not really me at all. But I do quite like when I see some like the Tudor, the Celtic kind of designs. I think they're fantastic. I can't my dad is do. He used to he used to do a lot of wood carving, and he oh crikey! In no time at all, he could carve a Tudor rose. An absolutely oh, amazing. So here, because the grain's going that way, and it's getting thin here, so I'm going to have to be quite careful. It's not going to have as much strength as the rest of it. Come 
to there, around here, so all this section to be one piece. You see here, look, it's because all on that bit there is a possibility that could break. Now when you're using a scroll saw, you've got to try and allow the blade to do the work. If you start constantly pushing against the blade, because it's been a bit hard going, it means the machine isn't capable of doing what you're trying to make it do. But you'll make the blade, obviously you can stretch the blade because you're going to bend it, but also you'll make the blade hot. And that's when it breaks, is when it gets hot. So I'll be careful out there. Now, now I've been using that blade a little while, I'm going to now tighten it up a little bit. Because what happens is it, it will obviously expand a little bit as well. So this is on the machine and also, that's better, get more tension. It stretches. You can feel it when you're actually using it. That just comes with a bit of experience, you know. I have done quite a bit of work with scroll saws. Not so much with this machine. Um, but with one I built, because I, I, I built my own scroll saw. And it was a bit kind of Heath Robinson. It did work really well, to be fair. It's a really long stroke on that, which was quite good. Um, but it did vibrate a little bit too much after a while. Right, so you see the shape. <laughs> That's getting a bit Picasso, isn't it? <laughs> right, so I'm going to move this just so I can put this bit, get these bits cut out. Because I'm a bit concerned that it's going to break here. If it does, I'll just yeah, I'll go go with the flow. I'll just glue it back together again, I suppose. Right, let's remove it, this section. Part of the cheekbone. Oh, he does have lovely cheekbones. put it back together like a puzzle. <laughs> right, and um, then they've got the eye sections here. Then that, then that is that. Once that bit's cut there, that bit is done. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. I might just do that with the, um, you know, with the biography. That section's done now. So let's put that over here. Now on here, you can see here, well, there's, this is basically we cut into three pieces. You've got the um, the iris of the eye and the pupil and what have you. That's going to be one piece. And that bit, I might see if I get some LEDs to go into that, that bit. And then this cut here. Now I could say I'm going to cut that bit there, then I'll do that bit afterwards. It makes more sense to cut that bit here out, the smaller part out first, because then you've got something to hold on to. So let's cut the the iris out first. I have to, but I do live. France is very Catholic, and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> but the, <laughs> I hope my post lady isn't too um too religious. Take okay, those gargoyles on the Notre Dame, or there was. I wonder how they get on with that. Time Mac once said it'll be built, rebuilt within five years. It's five years already, isn't it? Is it five years yet? Is it burnt down? Right, so we've got the eye, and then we've got the pupil. So these are all little details. Just another look you could do, but I'm not doing that. I'm doing what I'm doing. So I've got to do the same on the other side. And hopefully we can then 
put all the bits back together without... Oh, well, that obviously goes there. That makes sense. Another bit goes on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth am I doing? No, I'm going to cut this bit off first because I'm worried about that piece here. That looks very Picasso. See what I just did? I shouldn't have done. I took the eye out before doing the eyeball. Done exactly what I said I shouldn't have done earlier. And this is what this is what's difficult. What, I've already like chipped the edge here a little bit, which doesn't matter. But <laughs> stop that! Get back down, you. Never to hold on to, you see. So you could use this if I wanted to. So I've got a hole down here, which it might be a good idea considering that I've took too much meat out of it. And now let's stop it from going up. You see. That's the idea. I don't tend to use it because it gets in my way. Okay. It made sense there. So, okay, we've got the eyes done. Oh, we're getting closer. Uh, that I'm going to leave alone. I can't remember. Is that a part of it? I think it is. I can't remember. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. <laughs> we will see in a minute. Right, let's get back to the bench. We've got uh, some dirt, is it? Is that part of it? Yeah, it's nose, isn't it? That's, that's the nose portion. Right, let's put these bits together so we can see what's going on before I kind of lose my mind. Again. Don't know what will happen again. No, don't lose your mind. Ah, oh, damn it. The things we do. <laughs> hey, we've got 11 people there. Hello there. How are you doing, 11 people? Do -do -do -do. Look, was it 2019? Was it um, Notch Dam Fire? I well, think five years, isn't it? About three years. Well, it'll be three years this year. Crying shame. How do you get all those skills? You fit the skills that you use to build that thing. You're gonna have to, yeah, it's gonna have to be built in the same fashion that it was before, isn't it? But obviously with these machines and stuff, but you know, masons are not exactly pen a penny, are they? Okay. So I'll tell I'll put you on as a camera. Okay, I'll have a tripod. And let's see if we can put this together. Oh, it's like a puzzle. Blimey. There's my guide. That might help. It's getting a bit cold in there, no? That fire got... I'm struggling with the fire today. I keep them... Um... Oh, no, it's light. It's light. It's still there. Might be because it's so flipping cold. I'll be wearing this I'm just stoking the fire. Just got to put a cat in it. Yeah, only get a cat. Throw in a dead cat. Oh, see what I've done there? Stick some more sawdust on it. Oh, it's flaring up now. Let's see, I put all the sawdust where I shouldn't have put it. 
can't see. Ha ha ha. You can't see my mistake. <laughs> You're over there and I'm over here. But I'll be back. I do like this wood burner. It's really cool. It works. That's always a good idea. Right. Where'd that go? Well, that's obviously the nose. Let's get you back up here. Just so I can see. So you can see. Ugh. Got really the wider, wide angle lens on that camera. So that's the nose. That looks like it's the bottom of the nose. Oh, that's obviously it there. Which means there must be another air bit going there. There you go. No, there must be the, uh, the eye from the other side. Uh, so that must go there. So that goes in there. Blimey. <laughs> I hope this works out, especially that I'm doing it live. I'll make a fool of myself otherwise, don't I? That one goes in there. And that one's the oh, top portion of that one. Oh, this is just like Picasso. It's just like Picasso. <laughs> that one goes uh, an eye. That means that must go there then. Oh, it's a puzzle. I said I was going to mark it, didn't I? And I never did. Another air, part of the air. Obviously goes in, uh, the air goes in there. Yeah, yeah, it was yesterday. On for say, um, oh, so, we have, oh, God, you're not facing the wrong way, aren't you? I can move the camera, it'll be quicker and easier. So there you go. Whoa, spooky. Right, so, how I have been doing this, I've been, see that, I'm not sure I'm doing this yet, so, I might just fit that piece as it is, obviously round it up, what have you, but forget about the tongue, and do the tongue as an afterthought, but carve it, I think. Um, I've got to create some relief, so like these eye pieces here, that one there really could have been thinner than the rest of the wood around it. To give, to give that relief. You could do the same with the ears, or not. The horns are fine as they are. I think what I'm going to do to start with, I'm going to do what I have been doing with the router, and then decide, maybe a bit more off there, maybe a little bit more off there. Oh, a bit like a diet. Oh dear, my diet starts soon. When all the food, all the carbs are gone in the house, and I've drunk all the beer <laughs> and wine. Well, it will be all the wine because I've got quite a bit of wine, but I'll, I'll, I can leave that alone. So I'll put it out of sight. That's the only thing about a low carb diet. You basically well keep all your sugars down and alcohol down as well, because obviously alcohol is also a fuel source for the body, and it, it kind of defeats the purpose of doing a low carb diet. And I've got to do something because I'm just I'm back to how I was before before I did my last diet. I've lost loads of weight and then I pretty much put it all back on again. This is a bit daft, but it gives me an excuse to lose it again, and then it gives me an excuse to eat more food and get put it all back on again. So that'd be kind of my plan. Omelets and eggs, isn't it? So you, you know, if the omelet is eating food and enjoying lots and lots of food. Well, then you've got to break some eggs first by losing some weight. Make room for it. That's what I need to do. Ah, there we go. Let's do an air first. An air, oh, no, an air horn. Sorry, it's a horn. Sand right as well because that's just catching. The bits are getting so small now. So what's happening is there's not enough 
meat underneath on the so the sole. There's too many holes or the hole in the middle of the sole plate of the router. So it's too big and it falls. You, you don't have enough to support and uh, get my words out a minute. There's not enough room here to support the router. So you can't like, freehand them and that's when you get these gouging. So I'll just round it off with a sander. <laughs> back. So I'll do that. I'm also got to change the, the pad because it's too fine for John doing with it. Ugh. Got all my sand and just over here in my drawer. Oh, bit of a mess isn't it? 320. Ooh. Probably about right. These are 320. These are back. Back we are again. See the pads on these, and the pad that I've been using on here, on this angle grinder, yeah, it's just a foam pad, and um, those pads cost about three euros here for us, we're about five discs, um, from just on the brick of marche. But I'll tell you something I made a while back, I might make another one and show you actually, because you could do the same if you do a bit of woodwork, see this, this is my hand sand and pad. All I did is make an ergonomic handle, like so, and that literally, one of them pads, that was the same, exactly the same as in that um, grinder, I made that. And that little spigot comes with these discs. The spigot's designed to go in the drill. So literally I carved the handle, made that ages ago to fit my hand, and there's actually a pin that goes through here, right through the metal here, so it doesn't, you know, it, w w it probably wouldn't come undone anyway because it's all aerodited in, aerodited in. So um, it's a, it's like a hex shape to, to the actual shaft. So um, not in the hex shape, no, straight. It might probably why I did it actually because it's, you can see it there. Anyway, that pin, there's a pin in there. Like all it is is a nail with the head cut off, driven right fr right through, and that's been obviously drilled through with the bit and a bit of glue. Um, you see, I had it. What's the state of it now? I'll put, I'll put one there as well, look. Pin there, two pins there, one there, one there for some reason. Don't know why there's two, but there is. Um, and that just screws on. Like so. And then you put your pad. So if that was your pad. On there. You know, sand. It works very well. Very, very, yeah, look, it works very well for hand sanding. I like it, it's pretty good. I use it a lot, but not for this job, because I want to be more aggressive. Oh, aggressive. That's better. These little bits are quite different. One thing, my hands aren't great, because I've had carpal tunnel surgery, and um, I've lost a bit of my dexterity in my hands, you know. Less control. That's, that's too fine. I need to, that's 320 is too fine. 180. Or even caught, even an 80 would be would be right. Let's see what I've got there, this thing, isn't it? So those are 40s. <laughs> oh, 120s. Oh, old. Old, 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 old. What's in over there? Oh, what are they? 320s. 180, that'll do it. Ugh. A 180. So put a 180. Let's, let's do a 180. 180. So these horns, I want to paint them probably white or cream colour. These are an aerosol. So I won't glue them in yet. They might not get glued in until tomorrow because the paint will need to dry. I'm not too worried about details on the back, as long as it's smooth and clean. So I'll literally just do that for that one. Oh, you see the effect now, can't you? When you get that kind of relief. It's quite awkward. What I should be using is my 
um, over there I've got my router table. That would make a lot of sense to use that, to be honest. Or place, get a piece of plywood or board, take these four screws out and screw this through. So only the cutting portion of the cutter um, pushes through, then just shove it in the vise. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> You've got to think about when you're using the router is the grain direction because if the grain if you look at that if you've got bits that going that way the, the router's going that way it can grab it and make it all fluffy but also can grab it and you can lose a bit of control <laughs> so you're right there do it there's some um, Skilled, skilled workers are very, very, very hard to find. The skills are different though. Those old techniques, like for instance, have been used. Yeah, you know, they are about. People do still practice these arts, but not many of them that do now. Even for me, even just hanging a door properly. Oh my God! The amount of times I've seen doors hung by so-called professionals. They've got no need in their jaw, they just don't fit properly. They bind on the hinges. Especially um, English style um, doors, it's quite actual fitting. Here in France, doors, for instance, all come all pre hung. They're really, when you buy a door here, it's all like, designed around um, a new build, not like doing refurbishment. And the trimming here in France is terrible. That's my opinion, anyway. You know, when I do my trimming, um, I do English style the best I can, in the sense of the old fashioned style, where um, you've got proper arc draves and door linings and stuff like that, not an actual door frame, it's just door lining. Um, because then you can trim it properly. It just looks so much nicer. That's my opinion. Some people have got different ideas, I suppose. Okay, so that horn there, you see, if I show you, you can see the relief it gives you. And you think being not the same on this piece as well, it creates like a bit of interest. I think, you know, makes it. Makes it it's going to look cool. If you say otherwise, there'll be trouble. So like on this piece, I, I didn't attempt to go to the end, so I'll do that with the sander. The reason for that is, not same on that piece, because the reason for that, that, that would just, there's, there's no support. Because you rounded all that off here, that's all rounded off, so you've got nothing there to, you know, to rest on. So it's best to do it like this. <laughs> Lighter seam, lighter seam. I didn't see what it was in. I remember that. This is vulnerable, as you see there. Obviously, once it's all glued together, that'll support it. You know, each piece will support the other piece next to it. Now, 
then we'll be doing all our wood burning onto it as well. Right, so that piece is going to go in here. Oh, it's a puzzle. Very puzzling. Is it puzzling? Why the hell am I doing it? <laughs> it's going to go on there like so, and that's going to go on there like so. So the fact it's coming in, isn't it? So it's looking cool. So the next one I'm going to do is this one, the big with the snout. We've got these bits there got to be done as well. This one there, one, one on each side. Let's do this big piece here. Oh. pointy bits here, got to do the same with those with the sand. <laughs> I would like to get a sanding mop. It's like a big, um, I think like grinding wheel, but it's, a sanding, it's for sanding. It's um, like a floppy mop, it's abrasive. So you literally get stuff like this, and you just push it up against it, and I'll just sand all the nooks and crannies. They're very good. A lot of scroll saws usually, but they're really expensive. It's okay if you're doing that sort of thing all the time. Maybe later I could do that. Maybe I'll get a sponsor. Well, that'd be cool. I've got a sponsor, and I can. Yeah, he gives me tools. That'd be handy. <laughs> I doubt that'll happen. <laughs> Get sponsored with fist tools. <laughs> Take a lot of chat. Oh, oh, did you see that? It's actually broken on there. So I've got to be very, very careful that piece. Oh, I ain't sanded it already. So it's going to have to go back on. But I have to do that when I actually. Um, you know, uh, glue it back to glue it all together. You mustn't lose that. So that was a part of what part is that of? Uh, oh, the ear. That's broken off, so I must be very, very careful. So I'll glue that back on and put a couple of pins in there, little tiny, tiny 22 gauge pins to hold that back in place. We'll put that somewhere safe over here so I don't lose it. Because that'll be annoying. <laughs> it's a little bit of sand on the back, just get rid of any splinters. Like I said before, I'm not that worried at the back. Oh, over there. Okay, let's move this camera a little bit back. Let's see a bit more. Oh, spooky. There you go. Okay, so we've got that portion now, so that's going to go back into here. Oh, it's building up bit by bit. It's building up. That one goes in there. So now we've got the eye pieces there, and then we've got this bit here. This bit here is also vulnerable, so I'm going to have to be very, very careful with this piece. Because that's the grain's going that way, and that's thin. So it'll be a bit ginger. <laughs>
続いていく。It's something nice about doing sort of like odd jobs, weird jobs like this. It's kind of like it's creative, isn't it? You know, you just kind of go with the flow, no real plan, <laughs> and then just it's just making. There's something nice about making something. I got my Etsy that I've, I haven't actually done over the last um, Christmas. I did a lot. I should have done some this Christmas. I was so um, consumed about you know, the other channel. A lot of other stuff didn't get done, such as this website. So I mean, so this, this channel didn't have as much. Well, didn't have anything happening really since about eight, well, March time. Maybe before that, even before February, even. I'm carrying on with the other channel. If anyone's what, um, wondering, I'm, I will be persevering with it. I'm going to do a mixture of um, live streams and uh, recorded videos. But I think what I need is I need to find a way to create some evergreen content for it. Sort of content that is like valid all the time, not just the news. The common news is it, you know, or politics, it changes. And today's news is tomorrow's chip paper. So you have to kind of, with a political hot channel, you need to make sure that you're constantly pumping out content. It's very tiring. <laughs> I enjoy the learning. That's, I think that's, that's a lot of it. I do enjoy learning. Even with politics, it's, it's constant learning and shock. Oh, here it goes again. That silly light. Come back, light. <laughs> right, so there we're on to these eye portions. They're going to get a bit tricky. They, they're going to have to be sanded by hand. These are what fairly pronounced, but these white bits here, which will be white, need to be relieved a bit more. But first, we can do that one and that one there. So we get to the little finicky bits. You probably ask, oh, well, how do you do it? Hands are so close to that far, sharp cutting bit, what have you. But I've been doing this for a long time, and I kind of like, I understand how the, the rotor behaves, you know, how it grabs and stuff like that. Like, for instance, we've got the grain different, you feel it, you can feel the, the you get feedback. So you have to, you know, obviously it is a concern if you're, um, it's quite easy to mess up, obviously, you could hurt yourself. So if you haven't done it before, you used to degree, either you want to hold that down or, or have something to hold it down in, or use a rotor table. With a bit just poked out through, so you've got no real um, anywhere for the for the bit to fall in, and also just or just use a sander. <laughs> like that, still works, still does the job. Originally it used to be done by carving. Like a little flex cut type um, carving chisel, a little handheld carving chisel, so you whittle it. Okay, 
Mine says that one. Oh, not there. To go there then. Oh, so it does. Let's see how it's come together. Not on any sanding. <laughs> Air bits. I've just noticed something that has come off there as well, but where is the bit? It'll be about here somewhere. There again, it doesn't actually matter too much considering where it is. Because that probably broke off with the router or fell off when I was cutting it with the uh, scroll saw. Oh, I did. So, that one, and that one. Da, da, da. You know, people talk about you heard a wood called Douglas fir, I take it. You might not know this, but Douglas fir actually is not a fir, it's actually a pine tree. That's pine cones. Is it that one? I think it's that one there, isn't it? Just put it over here. Oh, you can't see. <sighs> oh. Oh. I've got this end, this one. <laughs> That's just broke off as well. Right, oh, we're not doing very well here. So I've got a few bits of glue back on. So that must go over there as well. I'll put it safe. Matters actually looking like that. I'll sand that in, unless I can find a bit, then I'll stick it on. But um, right. So what we've got now, we've got that bit. We're just going to do it as it is. I'm not worried about the tongue at this stage. Like I said, I'm going to do that separately. So that will be gone on there, like so. Where I live in France, they have a, well, they haven't had it for a few years because of COVID, but they do a fete. People come from miles around to go to this fete. An amazing uh, fireworks, really amazing fireworks. Um, they haven't had it for the last two years. 
But um, the uh, floats, we see these floats going through the village. But I used to have to do, a, yeah, people were volunteers, and I was one of the volunteers. And that year, not yet last year, or the year before, the year before that, we made um, the pharaoh. <laughs> that was Egyptian. The theme was Egyptian. And I, I built the pharaoh's uh, big long beard thing, golden beard. <laughs> Uh, and also the snake, because I carved. I put a lot of effort into these things. Don't they? Um, all the locals, like, you know, the, the old French boys and that, and, and that, and they'd um, come together and they'd uh, make all these floats and stuff, and, and you know, and motorise them as well. So we had a bull's tail wagon, and I don't know what they had to do with Egyptian though, but. Um, the pharaoh actually rotated. This thing was like 15 foot high on this like uh, lorry base, lorry trailer base. Well, that was a tractor trailer. And it's, um, it was really unstable. I could see it, fall, well, it really sinister there, now, doesn't it? Yeah, I could see it falling over. I thought, crikey, this thing's lethal. But they listened in the end and created like a rail system to help support the edges of it. Even then, it was a bit precarious. Now, I want those eyes to be sunken a bit. I don't want them the same. So I'm going to actually make them a bit thin. I can't do it on the table saw, obviously, because it's a shape. But I could do it on the fret saw, but I might just sand it. <laughs> and I forgot to put a mask on. Silly me. So now it should be thinner. Probably, that's probably enough. And then I'll sand it into... Which thing is it? That one or was that one? <laughs> Could be that one. Yeah, probably. That's wrong way up. Yeah, that's thin enough. I think it's thin enough. Maybe a little bit more. Or at least it needs to be. Well, it's not flat. Arr, what am I like? I think it won't matter. Once I sand it, I should put a shape on it. It won't matter. I don't know about shaping that edge. I've got to be really careful. If I rotate that, I'm going to break these corners off. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll leave that sh internal shape there because a little bit of sand in there, I'll sand a little bit. So it's not rough. And that's gonna go in there like that. Oh, wrong way up again. Oh what my leak. There you go, like so. That look better. Oh, it's coming along, isn't it? <laughs> oh that's so nutty. Now I've got this one to do, I've got to make it thinner again. Just want that extra, extra bit of relief. <laughs> Did you, what way around that goes it there? Or was it the way around? That way. If I was doing this as a recorded video, that probably end up being about three minutes long. <laughs> mm. Obviously live streaming takes a lot longer.
that one's a bit more sunken than that one, so the option there is really to make that one a bit thinner. Well, look at that. Have we got these little eyeball sections? Whether or not they go back in again, I don't know. Oh, they look quite cool at that. The LEDs are only going to be small, aren't they? I think what I'm going to do is before I think even that one don't go, that one goes in there. If I do keep them in like that. <laughs> so that is intarsia. That's that's the technique used. So. I'm going to round these up a little bit, the eyeballs, and then, not the eyeballs, I will round them up a bit, but these bits, I'm going to put some white paint on it, i put some white or cream paint on the horns, just spray them in, let them, they could be going off to one side, and then I can think about putting the rest of the stuff together. Oh, that light! Well, it looks quite cool, though, that light on, the light's bleaching it out. So, let's get to the next stage. So I want to get that bit done because it's the most complicated part of this project. So I'll just get that. So the two eyes, there, the whites of the eyes. I want them white. Just a little dust and the white paint. I'm not a lot. Not a lot. My lazy Susan. side. I'll put them near the fire. Oh, they've yeah, got white paint on. Wolf. The fire's keeping them nicely now. Okay, so next bit, I've got to do the poobles. And then we've got to do the wood burning bit. And a couple of bits there, we need to think about how we're going to fix them back on again. Got two bits missing, and a bit, there was a bit missing on the floor somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, Livy. Paint them black. So the two poodles we painted black. Where's the paint gone? Where's the black? We had it a minute ago. What have I done with that? I can't be the only person who mislays stuff. Because I did have it here a minute earlier. Because I used it. Oh, where it is. That on the lazy Susan. Is that the way? I'll just grab him. <laughs> the whole thing will be lacquered up as well. It won't be just this burned finish. Because we need to protect it from the elements somewhat. So now we've got to look at how we're going to do the rest of it. Uh, oh, these are going to be cream, aren't they? They're going to be painted white as well. Or cream. I might just do white. I'll do it over there. I think it's over there. 
Back in a second. Limey. Things I do. I'm painting horns. <laughs> I'm not after miraculous finishes or anything like that. I don't think it would actually look right on this anyway, if I did try. Right, that's... So. Anyway, I'll then come back. We oh, am. Yeah. Now I'm going to be doing a bit of burning. Put a bit of burning. Probably ain't under... God, it is nearly empty. So... Do a bit more burning, shall we? And then we can glue it together. See what it's going to look like. It's pretty darn cool. So, I think bits I want to be darker, like the inside the ears. Get a scorched earth look. What was that film? Oh, ap apocalyptic type film with Schwarzenegger in it. And that English actress who's really anti Brexit and anti Tories. I've got a name though. I want these to be quite dark. Uh, pretty much setting in the light, really. <laughs> you can obviously do this in the, in the actual fire itself, but you obviously got to have a way of getting it out again. Okay. Mustn't be too close because that part is too cold. You've got to be about just up past the blue flame. Oh dear, caught a satellite. <laughs> right, so that's the two ears. It's probably really hot now. Ow! Uh, let's do the nose section next. these bits I want to be more dark on the edge than the rest of it. So if I bring it back, see what I mean? If I go too close it doesn't work very well, but if I bring it further back it's hotter. The nostril sections I want dark. Bring it back a bit, see? It's more effective. So you can be too close. Oh, the gas is getting really low now. But I do have a spare. Oh, why does that take so long? So these are the eye sockets, so they need to be quite dark. Nasal passages. Not too worried about that being too dark here on the air. Oh, the castle's getting. There, they're all gone. But I do have a spare. It's over there. I didn't realise this, you can actually, if you almost burn a bit of wood so it's charred black, you'll actually preserve it. It's less likely to rot. I don't know why that is, but it does seem to work. It's probably just because that was carbon, isn't it? People used to like burn bottoms of fence posts and stuff years ago. I don't know if they use that technique anymore. Obviously, you don't burn the living daylights out of it. You saw the char. I think that's that. I'll take a while. 
the cats is getting low. Mm -hmm. Right, let's put them back over here. Oh, it's got way too low now. Right, let's go get a gas bottle. Lay me. It's like a match. Shake it about, shake the gas. I don't really want to. Take the gas bottle out while there's sort of gas in it. You have to see a little tiny bit. Should I throw it in the wood burner? See what happens. <gasps> a gas bottle. Has anyone seen a gas bottle that's exploded? Oh my god. When I saw the bottle afterwards, a little salvage that was um, almost like being peeled out. It's a bit like alien busting out of the stomach. That's amazing, really. The power in it. You know, a gas bottle explosion. In France, and everybody has them. We do. You know, our um, cooker's powered by this, this gas bottle. The LPG. Oh, come on. It's taking too long. I need to change the gas. Oh, that's that one anyway. That's a nice socky bit. It's a cheap bone, I think, isn't it? Is that a cheap bone? I think it's a cheap bone. Yeah. Cheekbone, next cheekbone. No, that's all that it's going to have to be um, changed. Be a bit smelly. So screw the bottom. Take the brush off. It was a paste type on the suit. There's no valve on that. The valve is just in the handle. There's all different types. I've got a better one over there, but for some reason it's not working properly. When you try to put the gas bottle in, it's too loose. And it tends to, um, well, just leaks. And then I've got my, um, I've got two of them, two I was using when I was in plumbing work. Oh, those things are brilliant. The um, Wolfenberg ones, which is the same make as the gas I just put in there, actually. I haven't got any gas for it. Well, there's a little bit of gas in there, but I don't want to use it on this. Because this will do the job anyway, so make sure it's done up. And screw that past the top. I usually put a bit of um, syrup and grease on the on the rubber. I well, normally do, but I forgot. It's piercing the top, literally. There we go. So it should be quite different. Ah, that's more like it. Look at that, now it's working. A little bit less laborious. It's caught the four already. Was it Abbas 3 I started your turn, wasn't it? Time. Well, UK time anyway. I think I'm just over an hour. Oh, it's going quite well then. What's going on? A bit, no, a bit longer than that. Oh my god. One, two. Oh god, we've gone a long way. Long while. Oh, the screen's frozen. <laughs> Over there. Oh, what do that for? What did I turn it off for? I didn't want to turn it off. There you go. There. Next one. That was a cheekbone. Oh, got this weird bit now. Look at that weird bit. That is an eye socket. I want that area there, the eye socket, very dark. It's a bit of cheese now. That's bad. What do you have one a bit more?
What's that one? Oh, the suspense is killing you. So now I'm going to do that one here a bit darker. Now I can. And the blowtorch is more effective. That's a bit of a shake. Oh ho ho! Is that a bit ferocious? Why are you overdoing that bit? <laughs> Remember, not be too close. If you're too close, you it just it's the cooler part of the the actual um, flame. That's got some loads better. Oh, that little hole. Oh, that's sinister. Oh, it's spooky. Another one. What do I keep turning it off for? See it in a minute. That does look pretty cool. But you can't see it yet. Ha, 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 ha. That's going to be the tongue bit. That's going to be more, it's more of the mouth than the tongue at the moment. The tongue, I'm going to do, well, separate the tongue. I want it red. Hold over there, that's all good done, that's looking good. Put this one side. Oh, show you. Ow, 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 that's hot. <laughs> Don't touch stuff that's hot, it's a silly idea. And it is. Right, there we go, live chat. What are people saying? In my glasses, in my pocket. And then I'll show you. Oh, yeah, come back. I could do with some grilled gargoyle about now. Mmm. Yum. Hello, Winston, buddy, how are you doing? Oh. Looks good with the eyes raised, like popping out of the head. That sounds, yeah, if you, actually, if you um, the search online, you'll probably be able to see some. It's all on the Orador website. So if you go back to that year, you'll see our floats that we used to bake. <coughs> before before COVID, the, the um, pharaohs were pretty cool. We've done all sorts of stuff. It's nice to help out, isn't it, you know, in your local community. We need to do some small work, says Mr. Witt. Uh, but the last quote, 10K, thanks to the new government requirement to install heat pumps. Home to... 10 grand for heat pump installation. Really? That's... If you're, and if, you, if, you, if you're talking about reverse warm air heating, it's actually really easy to install. Um, you have to be a little bit careful because a lot of them will take you for a ride. A bit like um, eco stuff, you know, solar panels and stuff like that. You get tied up to those contracts. The thing about the heat pumps is they're actually ridiculously easy to install. Most of them come in the kit form. Some you still got to really get. You still have to gas yourself, um, but you can get something just to gas them up for you. But the installation is so flipping simple. You have that um, the heat pump. You generally, if you're talking a warm air heat pump, you have a unit like a scent, like a um, air conditioning compressor, which you mount outside. You need an electrician obviously to get the power to it. Even that's not difficult. Um, and then you know, basically your pipe work, you have two pipes to turn the flow, what have you, from the um, unit that you have inside, which literally looks like an air conditioning fan unit on the wall with the remote control and stuff. And a lot of them will actually cool as well as heat. So they're, they're clever things. Like, for instance, if you look at your fridge, and put your hand behind your fridge, or if you've got any exposed pipe work behind your fridge, it'll be warm. 
it's basically working. The, it's, a, it's what it's basically doing is reverse air. Um, it, that's what it is reversing the, the heat, basically. But the, um, the thing about me is the amount of energy you put into the amount of heat you get out is actually quite low in comparison to what you're getting. Unlike an electric bar heat or a fan heat or something like that, which is literally just literally burning electric. That's effectively what it's doing. You're just trying to heat an element. But no, they're warm air people. It's definitely worth having. Um, they're not as efficient or as great as people try to make out. But, darn sight more efficient. If, you got, if electric was the way for your heating system, especially the way gas is going at the moment, it's definitely worthwhile doing. But 10, 10 grand? Now, me and, the only reason I'm talking, I know about this, because me and Mrs. have been talking about it, and we, we had looked at some prices. And you can get a... Oh, what was it now? That was a six kilowatt unit with two outlets, with two, with two fan units, and that was 700 for the kit, for two of them, including the unit out to go outside. I know it's in France, but um, 10 grand? Take the mick. Obviously, there's more expensive ones as well, obviously, but still not that much. That's just ludicrous. You know, um, the amount of BTUs we'll then put out, which is pretty cool. And because they're... Because they're um, they're drawing air in and drawing it and pushing out all the time. They're constantly moving and circulating there. They're quite efficient way of heating house. Anything with a fan in. Um, one of the things we want to fit here is a pellet burner. One of the reasons is because I create sawdust. At the moment, I'm bur I burn sawdust on my wood burner. But if you get pellet mill, you can create your own pellets. So they're about six, seven hundred euro, um, euros delivered, made in China again. Um, pellet mills. For a small one, because all we'd need would just be for us. And, um, but, yeah, that'd be it then, effectively. And um, we could use the, you know, the pellet burner for that. As I've we just buy the bags of pellets, or you can buy it in by the cube. But it's um, another good way of... Is that, I know it's still effectively a, a fossil fuel, really, isn't it? It's, it's still wood you're burning, even though it's a waste product, or should be a waste product. But you could even make the pellets from hay, straw, and all that sort of stuff as well. But the thing about it is, about a pellet burner is in comparison to like a wood burner, the wood burners we've got in our house, if you look at the volume of wood you're actually burning, is tiny in comparison. A pellet burner is, is, is not, it's about a tenth of the amount of actual physical volume of wood for the same amount of heat. The problem with wood burners is, is that they're not, not, very easy, not very easy to control. There's a lot of wasted heat, a lot of wasted heat that goes up the chimney. They're lovely, don't get me wrong, but if you're talking about the environment, it's not great, is it? Um, we have been looking at getting a pellet burner because it's, they're not horrendously expensive. They are fairly expensive, depending on what you get, but not horrendous. Um, it's something I can fit myself because it's so easy. You literally just plug it in into the mains and you have one tiny little flue. It's not much bigger than looking at a hoover hose, but you know, a little two or three inch pipe that goes out through the wall. That's your flue and up and out wherever you want to send it to. They're really, really easy to fit, ridiculously easy, in fact. And all you have to do is, is you just pour your pellets in to a trough in the top from a bag, or you can use a scoop and put it in, and it'll last like a day and a half like that. You ain't got to do more. But the thing about it is it's programmable, whereas, obviously, wood burn is not programmable. One of our biggest bugbears here is in the mornings. Our house is freezing. Now, although we've got... I fit the central heating system here with the wood burner in the barn. Oh, battery's about to go. I need to plug it in quickly. There it is. Um, with the wood burner in the barn and, and a wet system with radiators or what have you. I fit when we first started doing the house. Works fine, but the amount of wood. Oh my God, we're burning. I feel a bit guilty, to be honest. It's different when you're kind of processing it yourself or if it's a waste product. But um, it's one hell of a lot of wood. Really is. So wood burners are, you know, you are releasing, the other thing about wood burners, you're releasing captured carbon. But the other way of looking at that, that is, when a tree comes into its life and starts rotting, you're releasing captured carbon, but also methane gas, which is also a really bad greenhouse gas. So you leave it and do it for, I don't know. I think it's, that there's a balance, isn't there? There's always a balance. But if we all did a little bit, make a huge difference. Oh, they're dry. I do, they're, uh, there's eyes. There's horns. Ugh. A bit wet still. 
some of the paint I'm going to do when it's actually in situ. And it's all together. Does it work? Oh, one way round. It's still wet. Still wet. The, the horns are still wet. The eyes are okay though. Well, they're bothered. I'll show you. Oh. Look at him. Is he looking cool? I think he's looking cool. I hope you think he's looking cool. Oh, that goes there. That one's going to go there. <laughs> we should have turned it around so you can see it properly, shouldn't I? Ooh, bits have fallen off. Get the horns in a minute. No problem with the horns. They're still wet. And then we've got the eyes. Uh, which is which? I think that one's that one. And that one's that one. Oh, scorched earth and all that. Oh, a bit concerned, I'm gonna. Oh, I don't matter. I'll go to clean it off. Not there. Not there. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> Should we a red tongue as well? <laughs> what the hell have I been doing? <laughs> oh dear. Well, it's come along anyway. Let's, let's kind of sort of like try and put it to almost put it together just so it gives you a good more of an idea what it's going to look like with its legs and stuff and how it's going to give you an idea how it's going to look around the box. So, oh, I think that looks so cool. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not a kid in the sweetie shop. Oh, I mean, playing my toys. That's what David Chapman used to say, the guy that told you died, he had, um, he had a heart attack when he was fit in the conservatory. And when I used to help my father and, and, my, and, and, and um, David Chapman, that we sat on top of that portion. Uh, um, I'll need to the rest on then. Have a bit of wood. Uh, <laughs> and um, that's what he used to say. He used to say, we're quite lucky, really. We're like two kids going to work and to play with our toys. Tools. That's why they're boat building that was. Really like David Chapman, he's a lovely, lovely, lovely man. Kind person. You know? Do anything for anybody. He was a church, you know, he was a church goer and all that sort of thing, which I'm not really into. Um, not at all. I'm an atheist, so sorry about that. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in science. But I have to admit, it was so kind. Where's my leg gone? Oh, it's over there. That was attached to the other part of your body. Here you go. That's a leg. Oh, it's sort of coming off. I think you're too far away to see. Let's see if we can get you a bit further away. Oh, I'll bring the tripod around here. Might give you a better aspect. Why is that wonky? Come back here. That's it. I think that's it. How's that? Yeah, that's it. Now I'll try and position this somehow. Oh, might be able to do it. Look at this, it's going to be sort of like that. Like that, but there'll be a tongue, a red tongue. And that's the ears. Can you see the sort of, look? I might be a bit more scorching on those bits later. Because I like that darker look. And then the letterbox, which is over there, which you can't see at the moment. Um, this is obviously not a part of it, obviously. It's just this bit here, it's just a supporter. So that's not going to be there. Um, yeah, but how cool is that? <laughs> yes, he is a bit square looking at the bottom here, but obviously that's because he's got to go around a square box. Which is here. So that's going to have to go around this. So you can't obviously have it round because it doesn't work, is it? No. There you go. So yeah, so that that is going to be mounted on the front of this. 
lost time now. It's now seven o'clock over here, six o'clock your time. What time do I start? About half past three your time, wasn't it? Oh, that's one, two. Blimey, I think I've been going about three hours again. It's all right. Let's walk. Well, that was four. No, two and a half hours. So I think we're doing quite well. So that's the look. Then tomorrow, we're going to plonk that onto here. Could start putting it on in there, actually. Should we do that? Oh, we've got to glue this together. Oh, no, that's what we've got to do next. This has got to be glued together. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's get this glued up. Blimey. That's fun, though, isn't it? <laughs> Is that nutty or what? I've got some glue already mixed up over here. Hopefully it hasn't gone off yet. No, nope. that's right. It's good. It's not going to go off very quickly in this heat. Cold, I should say. So we'll start with the bits that are... It's going to be a bit tricky because you've got to try and glue this together. I suppose I'll put it all together with the glue and then squeeze it and maybe put a clamp like there and there. You've got to figure out what the nails. It's got to be nailed as well, you see, as you go. So some bits don't really need to be nailed. And I don't want to nail things that are too obviously too flimsy. But some of it don't need to be nailed. If the outer parts are, are, have got a nail in or two, we'll be fine. Yeah. To be fair, it's cask of my glue. It's not going to come apart anyway. So before I try and fix it to that, we might fix the leg portions to the front in a minute as well. Then I'll have a good start, you know, head start for tomorrow. Because tomorrow I've got to do the wings. Yes, there's going to be wings. And I've got to do the tail. So I'm doing two shows tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, we'll be live again tomorrow as well. So, that I can have a bit of glue on it. Oh, shit. Sure. Mm, yeah, no, I'll glue that. Because the LEDs are going to be... Yeah. Then a bit of glue down here. We've got to make sure there is enough glue, obviously. But not so much it oozes out the top. I don't want it oozing at the back so much. I don't want it oozing at the top because that's just spoil the look. I'm getting the wrong place there. That goes to the R. That's it. Like that. So what I might do, I might get my other little nail gun. It's 22 gauge. Very, very, very fine nails. Very fine nails. I won't split anything, in other words. So just to make sure it holds together as we do it. And it's, a, it's not a 22 gauge nail gun. They're very, very skinny. But I need to make sure that we've got the, all the, bit, the bits fit in, that it's in the right place. So I'll sort of dummy that bit in there first before I whack those nails in. Because once the nail's in, there's no going back. That's pretty, you do have to put a few in. And that one's going to go into there. I don't want to put the glue onto this bit because it'll all scrape off and all them up, up the top. So we're going to put the glue onto the bit that's going to be touching, sort of like that, and then there. And squeeze it up, that's good. Like that one there, I can put a nail through that, that way. These are about 15 mil thick, so you've got to be careful where you put them. And also you need a few of them in there, it's no good to put one in. I'll never hold anything. Well, it would, but not about, not brilliantly. Now that could actually have a... Because nails have got quite long, and I'll be careful, I could split the corner of that eyeball out. So you better, sometimes it's best to leave it. You can overdo things. Now on the side, so that one's going to go into the... Uh, where's that go? About there, about there. Alright, so that one's going to have to go into there. So, so let's... Glue in there. You've got to be so careful. You put, you put so much glue onto your fingers, it just end up sticking everywhere it shouldn't. That's in there now. And there's this one. 
think they've got enough glue mixed up. I think I have to glue this up. Squeeze it up and then we're going to need to glue that one to that one. I just got the wooden um, nail in. <coughs> Carried away. There we go. Let's glue into that one there. Oh no, this is making me really tick, all this is. This is so funny. Glue's squeezing out a little bit. Doesn't matter. I'll put the horns last because I'm going to... I'll do them later because I really want to put some more paint on them. The air pieces can go on. So it'd be a great project if you're doing it with your kid or something, you know what I mean? They'd love it, wouldn't they? They think it's hilarious. What is it, kids? I love things that are scary. Like ghosts and stuff like that. Or I need to put a little clamp or something and just hold that on there as it goes as it dries. Because even when you cut a bit of wood, it tends you take the stress out strain at the wood, it can end up bending to a different shape. And you get a difference between like the rift sawn, quarter sawn, or even radial sawn. It just changes. The tension in the timber changes. Stresses. Good. What's coming wrong on it? I could probably put a nail in there. Do they have a nail gun? Oh, spooky. So, I'm probably even, I might better get one in there as long as I don't go too close. There you go, like that. Uh, that way, maybe. Yep. And if that's the case, there, maybe. Yeah, there's a bit split on that one, so do it about there. Done it. Nail guns are so good, it's so useful because when you put your nails in like this with airline, you're less likely to get split. You saw how long those nails were. These ones in here, these are about 40mm long. It's got right through it to pull out about there. It drives it in there, no trouble at all. Good, I think. Next stage. Put that bottom of the mouth there, that could be glued on. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I hope the, I hope the uh, Mary here doesn't say, nope, you've got to remove it. You're frightening our post lady. You're causing a disruption on the roads. I doubt it, I could always get the tractors. There we are. Lots of tractors. We used to get more traffic down inside our house, but um, because it used to be a freeway, or it used to lead to another freeway, but since the farmer, 
as a prod, he managed to get, um, he used to be through, very, he used to go past his house, or past the farm, sorry, but you can't drive past the farm anymore, there's no, there's no, um, no entry, which is a real pain in the neck for, for us, but um, I understand why he wanted to, but um, it's not good for anyone else, because you've got to go a long way around now. On there, that could be a big one as well. Big nail, should be a good nail, shouldn't be any problem. And here, maybe another one, not there, there, and there. This is, you gotta admit, that is looking pretty damn funny, isn't it? Now, it, is that me, or what does that remind you of at the moment? Looks like Yoda. <laughs> Take the horns off, it's Yoda. It's not now. Put the bath section on there, let's get that glued on and nailed. So it's good to get the glue nailed now because they get this gluing up done now because obviously it can be dry for tomorrow. Which should be good. I'll glue on those little bits that fell off as well. Get them glued on. There like so. I think I could do a long nail there, and maybe a couple of short ones on the end here. As I've I'll put some clamps on. Look, it's not that critical, to be honest. I don't want his chin falling off. Don't forget, this is also going to be glued onto hair as well, so you've got all that support behind it. But there, right? That's it. That's on. And then there. That's good. So then it's just that there's a tongue to, to go on. When I make it, the back will need to be sanded off flat, obviously, and then that is going to be on there, like probably about like that. So the airs are sticking up quite high, so I'll have to make sure there's support for those airs, or at least there's enough glue in there to hold it all together. Because then grain there, you see, it's all, it's, it's all end grain. So one thing you could do to reinforce the airs, you could actually drill an 8 mil hole. Or you'd six mil from the ends and then drive through a dowel right through the whole lot to reinforce the ears. So they don't get if they get knocked, they, they could snap off there because they're proud. So either that will provide some support to the back somehow. So that's that now. So there'll be that with the ears. I'm not sticking these in yet because I'm gonna put some more paint on the ears, on the ears on the horns. Like so. So I think I might get the body part portions fixed on here now. And then I'll call that it. So I'll put this out of the way. Put him over here. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> you got me, that is pretty cool. I'm quite pleased with it. First attempt, I ain't done the tiles here before. I did a little bit, a um, very small project. But not like this. It's sort of winging it, really, and I'm just sort of like going with the flow. Not much design going on. Um, so that's going to be going on there. So, let's change the angle of the dangle. You're the dangle on the camera. And then we're gonna fix those bits. And I'll leave this in to make sure, as I fix those bits, I don't actually, um, how to put it, block the thing from coming, being able to be removed from the hole, or preventing the actual, what we call it, the door from opening. <laughs> that wouldn't be very helpful. Oh, I've got the mail in there, I can't get it out. Oh, I've got this dark outside. Look right there. Blimey. Still flipping raining. When's the rain going to stop? It's still raining in the Netherlands. Bet it is, isn't it? Crikey. So much rain. That was a Christmas tree. That's our Christmas tree. We did have a Christmas tree. That we did. That door open. Spooking me out. You right? I don't. My well, door just opened for no reason. Anyway, that was a bit spooky. It's all these gremlins and gargoyles. Now I'm getting spooked out by the doors. Open them on their own. Right. All right. And first of all, let's see what you've been saying, if anything at all. De -de 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 -de. Oh, another bot comment. <laughs> it's a 
a bit further up. Put that face above the door and keep the local kids away. What? Yeah, Guy Fawkes. Yeah, definitely. That's the whole point there, Winston. Here's Mad Monk. It looks a lot scarier now. <laughs> I do, do that. It does look a bit nutty. <laughs> look at the painter's um, his horns. <laughs> Get another coat of paint on there. Get that stand up. Maybe shape him a bit more. Um, but no, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. What else we got going on? Oh, 13 people in there. Eww. Eww. A little old channel. I've, I've got about 2,100 subscribers now on this channel. It's only tiny. Oh, you've got a ginger giraffe. You've got a pellet stove, have you? How do you get on with that? Do you find it really good? You just said it heats your whole house. Um, is it a central unit or does it actually um, run radiators or, or whatever? Because my wood burner can actually be converted for um, pellets, but not, not be efficient, so I've been told. Um, but my uh, oh, my son's daughter-in-law's mother and father's got a pellet burn. I have to admit the thing's brilliant, and that does heat all their house. In the huge one, I think it's about eleven kilowatt. They have really insulated the house, dog. I must, must say. Oh, hang on, what's going to say up here? This is interesting. What's going on? Uh, cheers, Winston. It does look pretty cool with the eyes, right? So it just uh, makes it a bit more interesting, doesn't it? Uh, there is some grilled gargoyle. Just remember that I've got to install the new interconnected smoke and heat alarms soon as it's... Is it really? Oh, so, so it's going to be law now, is it? See, we have got, we've, we've got a system in our house. Caroline's hair is really bad. So the smoke detectors go off. Her um, hearing aids will beep. As well, do you know what I mean? So, some yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a bell system thing, it's quite old now, and he's replacing when you get a better system. That Calvin's not very good with text, and she kind of like forgets what she what she needs to be doing. It's all for her own safety, but she forgets. And you've got like a vibrating thing you put under the pillow. No, 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 don't, don't you go there. No, I was going through your head. You, oh, you saucy souls, you. Oh, dear. Certainly, we'll give us supposedly some to smile. That's the whole point. I, I want people to look at this. Like, what the hell? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a laugh, isn't it? You'd put the face above the door. You see, I read that, didn't I? Uh, we put a skeleton door bell up for Halloween. The local kids loved it. I bet they did. They had a spy that dropped down. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I doubt the wooden gargoyle would scare any kids away any more than none these days. A, a bit ferocious kids these days, isn't they? I have to admit, though, the kids here are pretty good in France. Hello, Geraldine. How are you doing, darling? Hope you're well. We're doing well. We're fine. Oh, you got the pellet stove in one room and the blower helps blow the heat. Yeah, that's kind of that's what um, my daughter-in-law's parents do. They've just got this one stove that pretty much heats the heart. It's quite a big house. Um, yeah, it heats, the, it heats the whole house. I was, I was well impressed. It's toasty in there as well. It's constantly moving. You know, it heat, it's heating cold air and pushing it back out again. So it's definitely worth having, I think. Um, do you know what? Every We're going to put a pellet stove in. Get to the end of the season. And if you don't do it yet, we'll do it before next season. And then and you forget. Or you, or you can't afford it. For whatever reason, you don't do it. So um, we must do it. No, because our wood source here, especially for the wood burners, is not a wood burner, I should say. It's not so um, good anymore. It's really expensive. And also, it's not efficient, is it? Wood burners are not efficient. There you go. So anyway, let's fit these other components, not the head. Because I haven't finished with the head yet. But I'll get the legs and, and the um, shoulders on before I finish today. So I'm only going to, at this stage, prob well, I might just I might screw it on, I might nail it on, I might, I don't know yet. In some ways, I'd, I'd rather screw it on. I've got to make sure it doesn't interfere with the box coming out. You see that portion there? There'll be more to the back of this to support it. We'll do it all flop the back like so. But we need to start somewhere. 
And obviously you've got to start with the legs really and making sure the legs are in the right place so this part is in the right place. Might be, you know, might be more tricky than I thought originally planned. So that's going to go on there like so. Then that one will go on there like so. And each part must not cover the green box. So to start with, I'll just like nail that on there like so. But not yet, because you can't read really just yet because you've got to make sure that everything else works. Well, know what I could do with that. I, I could use a clamp. That's what I'm going to use. A clamp is quite big enough to do that job. There's a lightweight one will do. Use a lightweight clamp for that. And then I can position the next bits, just so I hold it in place while I position it. So the let that can go back on here. Because the possibly I might have to alter the height of these legs, you see. It's a very organic process. I've got sander backs these, you haven't done that yet. Well I could do that in situ actually, look at that one. Mustn't cover the green. So it'll be like there. But then I could then let's just just manhandle it on there for a minute. Ooh, manhandle. Like that. Because I know that one's going to have to go on there. That mustn't cover the green box. No. If it does, I'll have to trim the suit. I thought I might have to alter it to make sure it doesn't. So we've got the other leg is going to go on there like that. Same difference, it mustn't cover anything. I'll do a blowtorch on the edges of that a bit more as well. So that's going to go on there like that. Uh, and that one goes to the side. That one's on the top, and that one's on the side. Well, actually, that's quite hopeful, actually. The only thing I would say, if you look at this now, I think I'm going to have to do a bit of trimming. And I think I'll trim that end, or this end. No, I'll trim this end to make it a bit shorter. Because that, ne that needs to be mounted about there, you see. And that is now about half, oh, a good half inch too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and, that's also, that's, and also the bottom needs to be trimmed a bit as well. Those bottom bits that hang down need to be a little bit less pronounced by about probably half inch again. And this effectively needs to be shorter on this, this end. And then that'll be okay, I think. So after all that, <laughs> we need to take a little bit off here, probably about how much off there. A bit of that off there like so. so. All I'll do is I'll just trim a bit of that off here, and trim a bit of that off there, but also this here. So if I grab this, basically I feel it's it hanging out too far. So I want a bit further in. So um, and also it's not covering enough of this, this this wood here. So that I'm going to move in a little bit, by about half inch, so about there, about twelve point seven millimeters. If you're talking about half inch, I suppose. Right there, yeah. There. Come on. So I'll cut that out and then run right around it again and torch it again. Oh dear. And then that hair and that hair needs to be softened, flattened off a bit, which I might just do with the sander. Or I might cut it, I don't know. It's almost like it will be flat, doesn't it? Look at it like that. I suppose I could come round a bit as well, like that. A bit. Ooh, I don't know. Anyway, let's whack that on the fretzel, scroll saw, whatever they call it these days. Or bandsaw. No, bandsaw. We're going to do the bandsaw. You're coming with me. I'm going to do the bandsaw because. Yeah, the curves aren't too steep, not too sharp.
on, suppose that a lot of that is covered, isn't it? No, it's not. That bit's covered, that bit isn't. Yeah. Removes its pe pecs. So the pecked up money. The pecked up. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? Right, so next we'll just go over that with the router again and torch it again. Because it was too well, it was effectively too big. I said that was I did say it was organic process, didn't I? Let's double check that's okay. That one goes in there. Do, 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 do. What a bit more out of there, I think. I thought I drew around that. <laughs> that one goes on par. Just a bit more trim there, and that. So that needs a bit more out off that side. I sand that flat as well on the back, one matter. It's got to be done anyway. Fine, that's good, that's there, and then that's there. Before I get carried away this time, I'm going to offer it back onto here, sort of dry fit it again, make sure it's um, okay. So that one's going to go on there like that, sand the back one at it. I might blow torch that as well, a little bit better from behind. A bit like me. <laughs> no? Okay. Dry fit that first, really. Come on. Get this gas a bit dirty. That's better. It shouldn't flare up like that.
Okay. I'll do that, but... Oh, it's a bit flurry, isn't it? <laughs> right, just going to go on the bar. Move that away. So that'll be. Then that one's going to go... Is that one or that one? I can't remember which which now. It's... I'm going to go on there, so I need to just clamp that a little bit. There. At the moment, you see it's covering the box up. Don't want to cover the box up. Just move that camera up a bit. Can't see a thing, can you? There you go. So at the moment, it's covering a bit of the green box up, so we need to make sure that's not doing that. Because if I ever want to replace the box, or if we'll get a mail out. <laughs> that's kind of the point, isn't it? You need to get your mail out, your bills. Yeah, okay, maybe we ought to leave them. So, that's good, that's good there. So then we have this portion half. It's going to sit on there like so. That looks better. Now what's going on over this side now? So when I get these legs on here, then I'm going to call it it. Because I'm going to stream for quite a while, I think. So that's going to go on there. And that's going to go in there like so. It's not quite wide at that point, they can, that, that one can come in a bit. I can cut that in there, get that a bit close to that leg, because that can go around a bit. Do that like that. Yeah, so I'll cut that leg in so it sits on there, on there a bit better. I'm happy, that's pretty good. I think that'll be alright. So is it covering? Maybe not. Am I mumbling to myself? I am I'm mumbling, aren't I? I do tend to mumble. Why do I mumble? Who talks on the house? I know I do. So I'm going to put that probably... Get, I might just put a nail in there. Move it along to there. Get that one on there. And hopefully... Oops. I know this end's okay. The only alterations I make now will be on the actual leg itself over there. So I might get a nail in that, just to hold it into place. Then I'll probably regret it. Think, oh God, I don't want it there. That's what usually happens. There's a bit, because the shapes and so many bits, and it's only me in here at the minute. If Carol said she'd give me a hand and then she could hold it was trying to get the fixings in. But she's not. She'd probably sit in front of the warm fire. Yeah, that's what she does. <laughs> Why am I in here getting cold? Right, let's get one nail in there, I think. Let's put one nail on this end, I think. It might be a bit make more sense. All right, there's one nail in there, just hold that. Looks so. So that's going to be the R. That needs sanding, that does, anyway. So, I'll tell you, I'll put the next one in there, because then it can hold itself straight. There you go. So far, so good. Yeah, that's all right. So let's, if I can reach, I'll get that one on here. I've got to sand it first before I fix that in place. The backs, that is. And then torch them. And that's going to go in there like so. But more. That is. Yeah, that's fairly. That's all right. That's pretty good. It does look like it needs something underneath that foot, though. I might actually just. Like that. It would have been a bit more. Like so, really. But I quite like it sticking out, actually. It looks. No, I'm going to have to like that, I think. It does probably mean I'm going to need to put something behind it to support it. Can't remember. That's there where it should be, isn't it? Hang on, that would be a bit closer at that point. If I get that... Oh, there we go. That could come a bit closer. Alright, so... 
if we get past so. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll do it there quickly. I feel it needs, that needs to go that way now, which I can do by tapping there. Because those nails are only thin, they'll, they'll bend. So I'll get a four hammer, which is a, like a rubber mallet, whatever. What? Where is it? Where's my four hammer gone? Oh, might just be a hammer then. Or a rubber mallet will do. It's a bit bigger than my rubber mallets. So we need. Why, where is my four hammer? Four. Where are you? Oh, so I have to use a natural hammer hammer. All right, so I'm gonna move that along a little bit. Jiggery pokery, this is. Oh, that's loads better. That's loads better. Yeah, that's loads, loads better. Right, okay, so it's not it was sticking out too far. More, more sort of balanced now. So with that in there, like as it is. I need to dive on. So it's in the right place. Right, and now these sand the backs of these. Two portions here. Let's get rid of splinters, we don't need splinters. This is the bag, I'm not I'm not worrying about the bag. I get too much detail with it and it being uh, absolute well it could take absolutely for ages. Torture it a little bit. So there is it are exposed from the back. These sets obviously it helps protect them, but also looks a little bit more well as it should. Intentional, that's it. It's going to be interesting, I'm going to do the, the back and also the, um, oh no, the slip flow torch, it's terrible, isn't it? Where's my Rothenberger? It's got to be the burner, I think, it's, also, it's not just the gas. The amount of times I keep burning hair off myself, I keep I smell my own hair burning. Lovely.
Did he DDR? I don't know what, what made me think of this. What possessed me to start this project? I have to admit, it's going to look funny, but still. <laughs> there we go. Oh no, it's caught a light. Oh dear. Oh no, we're on fire. Don't do it. Oh no, look, I am on fire. So it's that section, so this bit's going to be nailed on now, hopefully, and then that can be nailed on. So I've kind of got to do it at the same time, otherwise it's going to be, um, you know, be bandy-legged. Bambi or band Yeah, bandy-legged. So I've got to make sure it all goes together. So I don't want overly uniform, don't get me wrong, I don't, I'm not going to try and make it look like it's... um. Asymmetrical and all that sort of stuff. It's not really. Because they want natural. Who, you know, who's asymmetrical? And, you know, do you know any asymmetrical? Uh, you know, well, oh, hang on, I need to take a little bit of that off. It's getting in the way. Asymmetrical gargoyles. <laughs> Burn that again. Oh, I've got burn again. More burning. If you are worrying about me because it with flames and stuff, I do have a bucket of water over there, the wood burner. Just in case. There you go. That's better. It's not interfering. The back heel, heel spur there was... um. It would interfere with the actual box coming out. I've got to get the box out. Right, that one's in there. So that one's fixed. So, oh, make sure that joint is good. That's good. Yeah. There's going to be rear support going on with this as well. It's not going to be just nailed on a little edge like that. But yeah, that just won't do. Reposition that one a little bit. I'm not happy with that. Mm, don't know. I kind of like it being wonky. A bit wonky. That's a bit higher than the side, but it's too good to You can either shape that down lower or take a bit out of there. But how important is that? That's the thing you ask yourself. But I would say the shape isn't quite right on the top here anyway. Because that's got to go into there. I don't need a clamp on it now. <laughs> so that one's got to come on down to R. Oh, it does go in there. Like so. Just looking at that, I'm thinking to myself, I want to take that down a bit more here because it's a little bit too lopsy. Lopsy? Lopsy turdy. So I'd like to get that leg in a bit further here. Oh, no, in on that side, is it? So maybe not. I think I'll leave that then. There's more wood to go behind that, so it's to reinforce it, basically. So I'm going to get a nail in there, get things out of the way. Missed completely. I went right through. Where are my pincers? <laughs> Set that out. Let's try again. It was in the right place and now it's not. Take a bit out of there. So that sits on 
a little bit better. That's better. Some vape making the put it in the wrong place. Yeah, you got that time. Put the bottom one here. Okay. Now you tap that one down a bit. So those two will be going together. At the moment it's a bit sort of hovering about a bit because there's nothing actually really holding it much. So on there. <laughs> That's right. I feel, that, um, I feel that needs to be, that shoulder needs to come down a bit. But does it actually matter? That's the other thing. Does it actually matter? No, actually, it probably doesn't actually. <laughs> I've got my dad, so I'm going to get this finished this weekend. There's quite a bit more to go on there. I had to stick that a little bit. All right, so on the back here, I'm not going to overdo the back details, but I want something there. So I was thinking about some sort of, like a spine, and maybe sort of ribs come out of it, or something like that on the top here. Um, not too worried, really, but needs something. And then we've got the tail. Still, there's quite a bit to be done. And then we've got the wings. That's sort of the shape of the wings. They're probably going to have to be bigger than this. Cause I think it's gonna look, they're going to look ridiculous. So they're going to have to be bigger than that. The whole point is better to see them from the front. The whole, the whole point is the hat, what is it going to look from the front with its wings? And also it's, if I can find it, there you go, tail. So, the position of the tail on the back. So, anyway, I think as far as I can take it there, and the stream's been gone quite a while now as well, so, um, God forbid it. <laughs> it's making me tickle, and it is. So, yeah, I'm getting there, I think. I'm getting, we're getting there. So, that's kind of the look. Oh, oh, is that spooky? I'm looking. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that so far. <laughs> it's crazy it may seem, but um, it's a, it's a, it's a letterbox, isn't it? It serves a purpose. Yeah, of course it does. So I am going to call it it in a moment once I get my glasses and see what's been going on here. <laughs> Three hours! Oh my god, I didn't realise. This takes so much longer than you first anticipate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit kind of higgledy pit, sort of a bit, um, oh, I had to put it a bit 2D come sort of 3D, but it's still going to look, you know, it's going to look apart, it's going to look pretty cool. What you've got to remember, the only bit you're actually going to see when it's in its position is really the front. You're not really going to see the back. So how are you going to visualise it from the front? So with obviously the with the head and the horns and stuff, but then also a tail at the back as well, so you get the depth with the tail. And I was hoping to put a couple of wings on it as well. Um, I was going to put a spine in it, or a spine or something down the middle there, or even like spikes, I don't know, something. And I was going to put hind legs on I don't know if I've got to put hind legs on because I, I, I cut them out. I've sort of drawn them, um, but they look weird. Looks, to me, it looks like it's a man having a crap. <laughs> a little bit weird. So they were going to um, literally just be dummied on the back here. Uh, I, I don't think it really adds anything. I don't think it's going to add anything. I might leave them out. But I think the spine will. That'd be cool. And the tail is a must. Um, and the wings, I think. I think I'm going to put more effort into that. And forget about the hind legs, because I don't think they're going to add anything to the actual 
that, the overall effect. I think it's to be pointless. Besides, you won't see them anyway because you've got the, where the fence line is and where it is. You don't really got to see it. So it's a bit, a bit daft. So yeah. <laughs> oh dear. What are the things we do? Oh, cheers, Kit Kat. Yeah, it's, it's coming along, isn't it? It's going to be pretty cool when it's done. Hopefully, we can get it finished tomorrow. Does the post box slide into the wall? No, it doesn't. It's it's where we where we got a front front fence because our driveway is quite reasonably long. It goes down like a hill, and then we've got the, the front door. It's too far for to come in, and we always have the gate shut because of the dogs. So um, with our this is literally mounted on the fence. Um, think of a wire fence, uh, like a sheep fence and sort of thing. And we've got the, we've got the five bar gate, and then we've got a pedestrian five bar gate. And then we've got a space to the side. I'll show you later, but it's pouring down rain and it's dark you now. And then we've got a pedestrian, uh, sorry, another gap for which where the box currently sits. You can't really see much from the sides anyway, because when you come down the road, there's a bend like that. So effectively, it's, it's just you point it into the bend. So you're not really going to, I don't think it's going to add to it if I put too much on the back. But yeah, if it was like that and it was sliding into a hole in the wall, well, you'd have nothing at the back, would you? You'd just have this portion, you'd just have that. Because obviously the rest of it would be completely hidden in the wall, be pointless. But I want that, I want that sort of like um, layered 3D effect going on, wouldn't you? Because what you're going to see is that as you're heading up to it. I'm going to do something with the box as well. That's not going to be oh my saw. Um, it's not going to be um, green. I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it yet, but it's not going to be green. So this needs some work as well. Because a bit kind of like you know. Well, the thing is, this this, this box can cost like 20 quid. Um, but if you buy the next one, I was like 60. And they look, they look the same. And it's the same box as what we've had um, at the front there for, for nearly 10 years. And it's still fine. You know, it's just a good, um, own brand go on from Brick and Marche. So what, why change? You know, why actually um, go for a different make when the other one has been tested? You know, tested time has been all right. There's nothing wrong with the other box. The only thing is, I need. Hang on, so I don't want to remove the box and start building around the box where it was, and it's and, and the lid's been bent by the, by the you know by the, by the post lady because when these open they can bind and she sort of put some weight on there. And what, so what I'll do, I'll have a bit, I think I'll have a couple of little legs sticking out. Um, show sure what I mean. Might have a couple of little legs sticking out or something on the bottom here for this to rest on, so she doesn't end up bending the, the lid again. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Anyway, that's no idea. So that's, but that's not what this story's about. This story's about gargoyles and stuff and horns. Yeah, so you know, you know how it is. Everyone needs a gargoyle. Yeah, unless you're married to Pretty Patel, of course. Oh, I didn't say it out loud, did I? Oh, I was thinking that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you'll join us tomorrow. Um, I'm probably going to be about. 11 o'clock my time, so it's going to be about 10 o'clock your time. Maybe a bit late, actually, because it's Sunday and that. People are laying, don't they? Um, so I might start streaming my time at 12-ish, I think. Which is pretty much what I did today, to be honest. And then see how it pans out, and hopefully we can we can get pretty much finished. Hopefully. <laughs> anyway, ta-ta, and have, you know, have a good Saturday night. Don't get drunk. No, don't do it. That was bad for you, apparently. Oh, but I'm going to. No, I'm not. <laughs> Ta -ta. Do, 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 do. I'm surprised my mic.